So when you think about the most consequential national projects in American history, mm. I mean, the kind that just fundamentally redefine everything, mm. you probably think of what, the moon landing? Maybe the government's first investments in the Internet? Right, those huge nation-defining moments. Exactly. And today, we are deep diving into an effort that is uh, explicitly drawing those same parallels. It's called the Genesis Mission. And it is a massive, historic, national push to, well, to completely accelerate American AI innovation. We're talking across every single strategic sector. It's an initiative born from, it seems, both necessity and a kind of recognition of the moment we're in. That's a great way to put it. The source material we're looking at, these are the official planning documents. They show a really clear consensus. Which is? That the global competition for AI leadership it's not just another tech race. It's it's a strategic foundational race. So AI is now seen as the, the basic infrastructure for everything else. Everything. For future strength and quantum computing, defense systems, personalized medicine, you name it. Clean energy, all of it. Wow. Okay, so that sets the stakes incredibly high. The mission itself, I see it's built around three huge pillars. Yep. First, accelerating scientific discovery. Yeah. Second, strengthening national competitiveness. And third, unlocking breakthroughs powered by AI. So what's our goal here in this deep dive? Our mission is to get past that high-level language and really understand the mechanics of it. You know, how does it actually work? Right. This is more than just throwing money at AI research. It's a, it's a complete structural overhaul. It's designed to mobilize the vast and often siloed scientific resources of the United States. So we need to grasp how they're planning to make sure the U.S. stays the global tech leader in this, I mean, this incredibly fast-moving AI landscape. Exactly. Okay, so let's start with the ambition. It's laid out right there in the source documents. Mm -hmm. Why is this initiative needed right now? Why can't, you know, market forces, Silicon Valley, venture capital, why can't they handle this? That's the key question. And it's because the kind of um, foundational scientific progress they're aiming for is just deeply intertwined with high integrity federal data. Data you can't get anywhere else. Exactly. And problems that require decades of sustained non-commercial research. I mean, historically, America's economic strength has always relied on this cycle. The cycle of government-backed research flowing into commercial products. Right. AI is that next major frontier. But unlocking its real power means you have to combine the massive scale of federal science with the absolute state of the art in AI tools. The market is great at commercializing AI, but not so great at, you know, coordinating foundational science across a dozen different national labs. And this is where the comparison becomes just staggering. The planning documents, they explicitly bring up the Manhattan Project. They do. That's a benchmark you reserve for, like, existential strategic efforts. Yeah. What on earth are they building that warrants that kind of comparison? They're building an entirely new innovation architecture. That's the simple way to put it. Okay. If you look closely at the docs, the core idea is to tap into the world's largest, richest, and most secure collection of federally funded scientific data. Data that's often just trapped, right, in specialized databases or secure labs. Exactly, trapped. And they want to combine that with cutting-edge, purpose-built AI systems. The whole goal is to compress the timeline for discovery. That compression seems to be the key. Yeah. So tell us about the three specific goals that kind of define this new architecture. Okay, so first, they want to build powerful foundation models. But, and this is important, not the large language models you and I use every day. Not chatbots. No, these are specialized models trained exclusively on decades of scientific data, physics, chemistry, materials, science, biology. They're essentially teaching AI the hidden laws of nature that we've learned from all those experiments. So these are AI systems designed specifically to understand the language of science itself. You got it. Second, and this is where that Manhattan Project comparison really hits home, they aim to create these highly sophisticated AI agents. Okay, what's an AI agent? Think of them not as simple software, but more like digital researchers. They can work autonomously to test complex hypotheses, automate entire research workflows, or explore new designs for materials or molecules way beyond what a human can do. Can you give us a practical sense of what that means for a working scientist? It means an acceleration that's, Brian. well, it's hard to even fathom. Let's say a material scientist used to spend six months making and testing a hundred versions of a new compound. Standard R&D. Right. 
These AI agents could explore millions of possibilities virtually, identify maybe the top five most promising candidates, and then direct an automated system to physically create them, all in a matter of weeks. They are collapsing the R&D curve. That's the phrase, collapsing the curve. And the third goal. The third goal is to apply that incredible speed to accelerate breakthroughs in critical sectors. We're talking advanced energy, biotech, semiconductors. It's about making sure those foundational advances translate directly into national economic and security advantages. It's about building a single powerful national engine of discovery where before you just had a bunch of smaller independent engines that weren't connected. Okay, but building that engine requires, uh, I mean, immense technical integration. That brings us to the core mechanism here. We need to define this thing called the American Science and Security Platform, the ASSP. The ASSP, right. If the Manhattan Project comparison is the why, the ASSP is the critical how. So break it down for us. It's defined as a secure, integrated AI system. It's designed specifically to cut down the time from a scientific idea to, you know, a real world validated thing. It's a massive undertaking. I can only imagine the security requirements. I mean, you're integrating sensitive federal data with high performance computing. That's astronomical. It is, and that's what dictates the components. The platform isn't just a database. It's an active operating environment made of six critical parts. I'm both through them. The foundation is raw power. High Performance Department of Energy Supercomputers, literally some of the fastest in the world, and they're paired with secure cloud AI environments. Why is that secure cloud part so crucial? Is it just about accessing the data? It's way more than that. It's about trust and protecting intellectual property. The whole vision relies on blending sensitive federal data with often highly proprietary data from industry partners. Right. You can't just run that on a standard public cloud. No way. The secure environment guarantees IP protection and controlled access. That's what makes industry comfortable enough to even participate, and it protects national security. So you've got the power and the secure environment. What's the next layer? Then you layer on the knowledge, the tools. So that means those specialized foundation models we talked about, the yeah. ones trained on scientific laws. And then you need AI-enabled predictive and simulation tools that use those models to you know, make hypotheses and model outcomes. And the data integration. That sounds like the hardest part, organizationally. It is, which is why the platform requires secure access not just to federal and industry data, but also to synthetic data sets. Synthetic data, so yeah. AI-generated data. Exactly. And that's crucial because it allows the AI to train on scenarios or theoretical designs that haven't been physically created yet. It pushes the boundaries of discovery without compromising real world security. And what's the final piece of the platform puzzle? The output, the physical part. You need AI directed experiment and manufacturing systems. So robot labs. Basically, yeah. Highly automated labs and fabrication centers where the AI agents can physically test their virtual designs. It completes the loop. AI hypothesizes, it simulates, and then it directs the physical creation of the best candidates. What's really fascinating here is how the source material keeps emphasizing unifying all these different pieces, the labs, the universities, private industry, into this one single engine. Yes, it's forcing collaboration through a shared technical need. The platform is the connective tissue. By providing this common, secure, powerful environment, they just they remove all the friction that usually slows down the translation of science into application. And it sort of democratizes access to these incredible tools, at least for authorized researchers. While maintaining top tier security. It's a tricky balance. OK, so now we understand the tool. Let's look at where they're aiming this new national engine. Section three gets into the priority challenges. This isn't just, you know, blue sky research. It's very targeted. Oh, yeah. They have to be hyper-focused to justify this kind of investment. The documents are clear. In the first phase, the national labs and their partners will identify at least 20 high-impact scientific and technological challenges. So they're concentrating their fire. Exactly. Resource concentration, not diffusion. And looking at the list of domains, it paints a very clear picture of where they think the U.S. needs to reinforce its competitiveness. They're the big ones. The domains are all crucial for long-term economic and geopolitical stability. Oh, yeah. Advanced manufacturing, so how we make things, biotechnology and biomanufacturing, designing life and health, 
critical materials and supply chains, what our stuff is made of, and of course, nuclear and clean energy innovation. How we power the future. And I'm seeing two key digital foundation areas here too, things that require just massive simulation power. Precisely. Quantum information science, which is still so heavily theoretical and simulation based, and then semiconductors and microelectronics, where you're optimizing designs down to the atomic level. Can you give us a really concrete example of a hard problem AI is going to solve here, yeah. just to make it real? Sure. Let's take biotechnology. A classic hard problem is protein design. Okay. So say you want to design a new enzyme for industrial biomanufacturing, maybe one that converts waste into fuel. You are searching a chemical space with an astronomical number of possible molecular shapes. An impossible number to check. Man impossible. Manually, it takes years. The Genesis mission applies AI to this, cutting the time to design, test, and validate a totally new biomanufacturing process from, say, 18 months of intense lab work down to maybe three or four months. Yeah. That speed just radically changes an industry's ability to innovate. And what about in critical materials? Well... Think about what we need for next-gen fusion reactors or for aerospace. We need materials that can withstand insane heat and radiation. Finding that perfect material involves modeling all these, mm -hmm. these complex states under immense pressure. It's another combinatorial explosion problem. Right. AI agents using the ASSP can screen and discard millions of known material compositions virtually in a single day. That leaves human researchers with just the most promising handful to actually go and test physically. That's the leverage they're trying to create. This all sounds incredible, but an initiative this big, it needs massive collaboration, training, and critically, accountability. That brings us to our next section. How are they breaking down those old barriers between federal, academic, and private industry? Well, the documents really stress that collaboration is just foundational. They're structuring the partnership model to incentivize co-development. So it's not just a government thing. Not at all. It's not just federal agencies and universities. They explicitly state they need private sector AI developers to keep the platform cutting edge. And they need industry partners to actually apply and scale the breakthroughs. And the platform itself becomes the neutral ground. Exactly. The secure, neutral ground where everyone can contribute without compromising their own interests. Okay, but you can't run this thing without the right people. What's the plan for talent and workforce development? That's a huge pillar. Because the scientist of tomorrow isn't just a domain expert anymore. They have to be an AI-enabled scientist. Right. So the initiative prioritizes training the next generation through really specific programs, research fellowships, internships working directly on the platform, apprenticeships in the national labs. They're literally building the human capital they need to operate this new engine. And with all this data moving around proprietary, sensitive federal data security and governance have to be paramount. What frameworks are they setting up? It's non-negotiable. The mandate requires these rigorously standardized frameworks for IP protection. So clarifying who owns what before the research even starts mm -hmm. and comprehensive data management protocols for integrity and traceability. Plus, cybersecurity has to be embedded into the platform's core architecture from day one. This thing is going to be a very high value target. For sure. OK, and finally, accountability. This is where so many massive government projects can just fizzle out. How is success actually measured and reported? Accountability is built right into the mandate. The Department of Energy is required to report annually on the mission's progress. How do you that ensures not just transparency, but constant pressure to deliver real outcomes. This annual report is critical, and it has to cover five core measurable areas. So if you're tracking this sector, these five points are basically the government's public scorecard. What are they? First, platform capabilities and performance. Is the infrastructure actually getting faster and more secure? Mm. Second, research progress and breakthrough outcomes. What did we actually discover? Third, workforce development and student participation. How many people did we train? Fourth, industry partnerships and commercialization impact. You know, is any of this making it into the real economy? And the last point sounds like it looks toward the future. It does. It's resource needs and future recommendations. This provides the roadmap for the next year and keeps the whole initiative agile. This level of detailed annual public reporting is designed to stop the mission from just fading away into bureaucracy. So what does this all really mean for you, the listener? As we wrap this up, the Genesis mission seems like it's so much more than just an investment in AI. Oh, absolutely. It's a strategic coordination of the entire U.S. scientific machine, 
all pointed at solving these huge problems at speed we've never seen before. That's it. The intended outcomes, accelerating discovery, boosting productivity, strengthening security, and reinforcing global tech leadership, it all signals a monumental shift. A shift away from siloed research. The days of independent, siloed scientific discovery are giving way to this integrated mission-driven development where AI is the central operating system for the next scientific revolution. It's a fascinating, massive undertaking. And as we leave you to think about all this, here's a final thought to consider. Hmm. Given the stated goal of accelerating scientific discovery at this unprecedented speed, what are the broader societal and commercial implications for industries that rely on long, decades-long R&D cycles. I'm thinking pharmaceuticals, material science, aviation. And if this mission actually succeeds in collapsing that R&D curve, how quickly are we going to see these breakthroughs move from this high-security federal platform out into the global marketplace? Keep a close eye on those five annual reporting areas we mentioned, because they will give you the earliest clues of just how dramatically that acceleration curve is starting to bend.